Elon Musk recently posted a video of Steve Jobs talking about how the teams at Apple were able to create insanely great products. Today, we're going to watch this video of Jobs explaining how it's not enough to have a brilliant idea, and actually, it's the way a team molds the idea to the final product that really matters. Knowing this, do you think the recent report that Apple will be getting into home robotics, is that something that they'll be able to pull off? Let's review what kind of robots Apple might create, what are their advantages, and how likely might they be able to do this? I've got Brian White joining us. He's got his own YouTube channel called Futuraza. You got to check it out. He's quite brilliant. He's very funny. And he's got, he's got his uh, uh, intelligence uh, always showing up whenever you do your shows. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you, Herbert. This is a big topic. Uh, yeah. Uh, robotics. It's crazy. No one can do it. Why would Tesla try? Oh, you know what? Now everyone's doing it. Follow the leader. <laughs> That is so funny you say that, because obviously that's exactly what happened. It's impossible. And all of a sudden, everybody's doing it. And of course, Apple tried to get into the car. That was uh, scrapped. Now they want to get into robotics. Let's talk about it. But first, let's talk about Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. I've got a, um, a beautiful video that Elon Musk just shared. Basically, it's about Steve talking about how they make great products and what it matters it's a three minute long video but it is absolutely something that i just cherish i love steve jobs and that's one of the reasons why i like elon musk as well because they both are just brilliant people who create great companies who great 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 products things that really hurt apple was after i left john scully got a very serious disease and that disease i've seen other people get it too it's the disease of thinking that a really great idea is 90% of the work. And that if you just tell your all these other people, here's this great idea, then of course they can go off and make it happen. And the problem with that is, is that there's a, just a tremendous amount of craftsmanship in between a great idea and a great product. And as you evolve that great idea, it changes and grows. It never comes out like it starts because you learn a lot more as you get into the subtleties of it. And you also find there's tremendous trade-offs that you have to make. There are just certain things you can't make electrons do. There are certain things you can't make plastic do or glass do. And as you get into, or factories do, or robots do. And as you get into all these things, designing a product is keeping 5,000 things in your brain these concepts and fit, fitting them all together in, in continuing to push to fit them together in new and different ways to get what you want. And every day you discover something new that is a new problem or a new opportunity to fit these things together a little differently. And it's that process that is the magic. And so we had a lot of great ideas when we started, but what I've always felt that a team of people doing something they really believe in is like is like when I was a young kid there was a, a widowed man that lived up the street and he was in his 80s and he's a little scary looking and I got to know him a little bit I think he might have paid me to cut his mow his lawn or something and one day he said come on into my garage I want to show you something and he pulled out this dusty old rock tumbler and it was a, a motor and a coffee can and a little band between them and he said, come on with me. We went out to the back and we got some, just some rocks, some regular old ugly rocks. And, he, we, and we put them in the can with a little bit of liquid and a little bit of, of grit powder. And we closed the can up and, and he turned this motor on. He said, come back tomorrow. And his can was making a racket as the stones went around. And I came back the next day and we took, we opened the can and we took out these amazingly beautiful polished rocks. The same common stones that had gone in through rubbing against each other like this, creating a little bit of friction, creating a little bit of noise, had come out these beautiful polished rocks. And that's always been in my mind, my metaphor for a team working really hard on something they're passionate about is, is that it's through the team through that group of incredibly talented people bumping up against each other, having arguments, having fights sometimes, making some noise, and working together, they polish each other, and they polish the ideas, and what comes out are these really beautiful stones. Yeah, that was uh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. 
Yeah. Do you think, yeah. um, that, yeah, Elon Musk and Steve Jobs, do you think that their teams, uh, what are similar, what is different? This is the Steve Jobs area. We'll talk about Tim Cook, uh, shortly. Sure. So let, let, let's, let's, the rock analogy is beautiful. You do start, you know, I have an idea. My idea is a good looking rock, but what I don't want to do is deal with the time and the grit and the noise to get the polished rock. And that's what, that sometimes that's where the greatest things come out. Take a movie like Groundhog Day. It was supposed to be a lightweight romantic comedy. And Bill Murray uh, had a huge fight with the director, Harold Ramis. Mm -hmm. And they and the whole thing was a disaster while it was being produced because Bill Murray kept saying, this needs to be more contemplative. This needs to be more mm -hmm. serious. And in the end, what you got was a, a standout film that was like nothing before it and not many movies since. Uh, but it took a lot of stress and pressure and time to make it what it eventually became. Uh, a lot of people don't want to put in the work. Ideas are so much easier than executing them. And the grit in this equation is everyone we saw on stage last year at Investor Day when Elon put together investor day and said, I'm going to bring out all the department heads so you can see what we're actually working on and who is actually working on it. So you can understand that this isn't just a bunch of, you know, moonshots without a, a roadmap it, too many, too often in business and politics, people's people state objectives rather than a roadmap to actually achieve them. You know, I, things will be better, right? Great. How I need the, how, and investor day showed that and that's yeah i think that's a, a the big the big difference is the execution yeah and that's this is explains a little bit of why tesla is so successful when specifically when elon himself craves crisis he himself puts in these impossible deadlines and he says to the team you got to hit this that's what elon, uh, steve jobs used to do always right this reality distortion field that these two have where they're able to you know, envision a, a, a credible um, ending of where they want to get to. Everybody says it's impossible. They put a date to it. That's <laughs> impossible. That's why, you know, Tesla's, you know, famously late, but then they deliver the impossible. <laughs> <laughs> they delivered the impossible late. And that's the thing, like you were saying, you know, just earlier is like, uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's like, sure. It's like, yeah, we'll do this. But, uh, it's, it, it, robots was impossible now, but uh, here they're all doing it. Well, the word craftsmanship was used, and I think that's a, a great, great example. Um, if you've got an idea for a beautiful kitchen, that's great, but you're probably going to need to bring in some expert help from outside to make it happen. And those people are every bit as valuable in the equation. And if all you have are dreamers, you're never going to get anywhere. But also, if all you have are craftsmen and no dreamers, you're not going to get there either if what we're trying to do is get something that's, you know, never been done before. So, yeah, I think all, all of those words were great. And uh, Steve Jobs uh, cleverly, wisely uh, included the whole manufacturability. There's things we want our dream product to do, but the glass won't do it. Or plastic has its limits. If you look at a great example there is concept cars. You'll see them and you see this beautiful car. And people say, well, why can't they just make that one? <laughs> yeah. Well, because that one's not structurally sound and the windows uh, can't roll down. Well, then why do they even show them? Because they've got a cartoonish look that's that's beautiful and takes you back to your childhood when you would just live in a in a in these worlds of fiction in, in the books you'd read in the comic books, even those things are beautiful to the human eye, but that doesn't mean you can actually make them in any practical sense. That's why you got cars, you know, a lot of supercars where the windows either don't roll down uh, because they've been modified or maybe they even came that way, or you get windows that roll down weirdly or badly. The door is just the wrong shape. Yeah. So the different, the similarities and differences between Steve Jobs and Elon Musk, right? So they both have this reality distortion field. But Elon is, you gotta say, and as much as I so much respect Steve Jobs, who is who was definitely the top business person, the top product person I've ever ever seen. And then Elon comes along, and not only is Elon a, a visionary, but he's a physicist. Uh, he's like, he understands physics. <laughs> he understands first principle, and he's willing to study it. Like, you know, he went and studied how to do rocketry, right? 
uh, anything he's he studied banking he studied and, and so that's one difference is that obviously elon is much more of an engineer uh, person rather than just a product person and then the other difference is that elon and tesla are shooting for the moon shooting for mars they're shooting for bigger 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 ideas things that impact the world you know he's mission driven not i'm sure uh steve was also but he, and, and obviously at the time i couldn't think of anything bigger than what steve was accomplishing with apple you know computing right it's it's it was and it still is a very very important part of productivity and the world um and then he got into the phones communication which is also very important accessing the internet all that's really important all these apps and what they can do very important but you know what i mean like tesla is still just even one step higher just like that little bit extra bit higher uh and so you know that's why i i fell in love with both companies um but i i'm so happy that i have a I question see... for you though mm. why why did the apple car fail they spent 10 billion dollars surely that's Surely, if you throw enough money at a problem, that's all it takes. Yeah. Uh, but it isn't. So why did it fail? I was going to ask you that question. Um, I, I mean, I've I've got my answer ready. When you, but I'd sure. like to hear yours. Okay. Um, well, obviously, the, the easy answer is that Steve Jobs no longer there, right? And so Tim <laughs> Cook and the culture that he's created um, is not just putting together look, what he said. It's not just the idea. I want to I want a car, and it's not just coming up with all these constraints to it. Um, you know, look, the, first of all, like Elon was saying <laughs> so many times people don't believe a, uh, a car. The auto business is one of the hardest industries ever to make. Only two companies out of hundreds have just born and died, except for Ford, which is 100 years ago. And uh, Tesla are the only ones that, you know, really made it alive, survived, made profitable cars. It's very, very difficult. And you can see that Elon, you know, slept in the factories did all that. So you needed to do that to make an electric vehicle. Um, I think that, you know, that's not in Apple's DNA. Apple actually doesn't know how to create. They're not factories. They outsource, uh, you know, the phones and they're, the phones are smaller form factors. And that's why we'll talk about it. But I think home robots makes a lot more sense than it, the leap to the car, which is just unbelievable. They even tried. What's your what's your answer? Okay, so yes, cars are such a different thing. It's insane to to even ponder, but they had an idea, they had a vision. And with smartphones, you've got a huge margin. Apple, before even buying the phone, and they do have to pay the manufacturer to manufacture it, and the manufacturer wants their 5%, 10%. No big deal when your markup is 100%. But on a car, you're not going to double your manufacturing costs, not a chance. So that 5%, 10% becomes, the, becomes Foxconn taking the entire profit. It's not going to work. The trick is you're when you're doing something like this, you always are shooting at a moving target, which means you need to lead the technology a little bit with the iPhone, with the iPad, with the AirPods. Steve Jobs, and I know AirPods came out after Steve Jobs era, but it was already in the works. You, you need to be able to know how far ahead of the target to shoot to actually hit the target. And with the Apple car, it appears that they shot way too far ahead mm -hmm. and yeah. missed it by a country mile. And you've got to be able to see the confluence of technology coming. Are we going to, we, this car needs A, B, and C. Are we, are all three of those things going to arrive at the time the car is scheduled to go live. And if the answer is no, then you don't have a car. And the only way Apple could have done it differently is if they had partnered with someone on the autonomous side who they knew was going to be able to launch it in 2024, 2025. And making that guess five, 10 years out would have been a level of risk that they would not have been wise to, to accept. So yeah, I, I agree with you on all those points. And the idea that they were going to go from making something with a few hundred parts to thousands of parts, big, heavy, complicated parts <laughs> requiring all different kinds of manufacturing is unfortunately what I think mm -hmm. doomed them. Yeah. So they they are estimated to spend a billion dollars every year for 10 years, and it's a failed project. I think the reason they did that so was that they had no option. They needed to, they understand that autonomy was coming. 
that you need to have entertainment, that you need to, that it's, a, it's like a, the home and the car. Now, let's talk about the home. So now there's talks about uh, Tesla, uh, Apple getting into home robots. Uh, from iPhones to home robots, Apple's exploring new frontiers, according to reports. There was a number of reports. We'll review one of them. The future of hard smartphones just got even more intriguing. The reason I clipped this was just looking at these photos. Of course, this is probably you know AI generated, but it's you know this idea of uh, you know there could be a humanoid robot, but I think for Apple it makes more sense for these kinds of small form factors. So apparently. There was also uh, strong data, strong reports saying that Apple was going to make some small device like this one here, where uh, you know if you're doing FaceTime, it can map out the environment for AI, but just a, a tabletop, you know, screen, and but you can make them more AI enabled and smart, and eventually you'll create an AI companion or some sort of a robot companion that's there. That makes much more sense um, than something like this, per se. <laughs> Obviously, this is mocked up. It's funny. It's an Apple Watch. <laughs> this is the Apple Watch. <laughs> oh, Rosie. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> it's funny. It actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I like but it. This, uh, so Apple explores home robotics. This is from Mark Gurman, of course, well-respected person who follows Tesla quite well. The company has teams working on automated home devices, and now that they've dropped EV, that's what they're working on next. Apple has teams investigating a push into personal robotics, a field with the potential to become one of the company's ever-shifting next big things. Now, this is just people familiar with the situation. So um, engineers at Apple have been exploring a mobile robot that can follow users around their homes. Um, because the Skunk Works project is still private, they've, they've not been identified. So this is the, what I was talking about. They have, uh, they had also kind of been working on this advanced tabletop device that uses robotics to move a display around. Um, it's unclear when, if they're going to release this, it makes sense. But, you know, moving into the mixed reality um, allows them to have cameras in the home and they've got video of the home and they've shown you that they can do AI in the home. So like, you know, they can, you can point your camera at the fridge and it'll know what's in there. It'll know what's a beer. It'll be able to map it out uh, in a in mixed reality. And then the next thing is get me the beer, right? It'll should be able to know that. So this was a nice table and it showed, you know, this is the uh, progression of the products that uh, Apple released, the Mac in 1984, the iPhone 2007, the iPad 2010. You can almost see Steve Jobs sitting there on the, on the, on the chair <laughs> playing with it the apple watch came after he died the airpods um and next and that's it so you know and of course the mixed reality goggles that are really still too high high and too expensive but maybe that could break through as well what could their next big thing be um and then the, you know it's a combination of ai and machine learning which they've you know they've not yet shown how those guys can actually create a viable you know, group, but they they obviously have been expending money on this. They have not shown yet that they've, you know, returned on investment. So these are the people that are the executives that are focused on home robots, Brian Lynch, Matt Costello. Um, so yeah, now that they've got all these people, now they canceled the EV project, they have a lot more people and it makes sense, right? To actually combine something in the home where the efforts are doing what the Vision Pro headset could actually, you know, share resources, share, you know, just uh, the, the strategic for the planning for that could work together. Oh, uh, yeah. What's your, what's so, your thinking about them getting into that? The first trick with, uh, so a robot, what is it? It's just a, a smart speaker that has a body. That's not a huge leap to understand. Then the question is how much body? And that's where I think Apple is scratching their heads because, again, you've got to shoot a little bit ahead of the mark if you want to hit the mark. If they just shoot for what's known and definitely doable today, in two, three years when they come out with the product, it's going to look like an antique. So they've got to find that balance where it's not so ambitious that they can't get it done and not so safe that no one would want it. The problem they're having with the... Apple Vision Pro, like you mentioned, is that cost is 
prohibitive. And if it's so prohibitive that it doesn't build out its own ecosystem, that the people developing the apps and the, the, the neat features are going to struggle to attract sufficient user base to justify their expenses, it's going to hold them back. I can't tell you how many people I watched on X who excitedly bought the vision and tried it out and before their 30 days was up said, this is not worth $3,500 and returned it. Because as cool as it is, that's a lot of money, man. And in the next year, it'll get cheaper. In the next five years, it'll definitely get cheaper. Chips only go down in price. That's just how it works. So uh, yeah, on the AI front, we haven't seen much. What, what are they doing? Nothing? No, they're just being quiet about it. It is unreasonable to imagine that they are not moving forward with AI at the same pace as everyone else. Certainly at the same pace as all the startups. The fact that they're not showing us what they're doing doesn't mean they're not doing it. It means they're keeping it to themselves. And we don't know what its practical applications are necessarily today, certainly across the board in terms of all the things they're working on. But I don't think any company apart from the startups who are money hungry and eager to survive uh, would be willing to show what they're actually working on because they don't have to. Apple's got the money they can keep moving forward as long as they're going in the right direction. I'm confident that over the next five years, every competent company is going to have AI offerings that are maybe not exciting, but just plain work in ways that would make it difficult to imagine them having the successes they do without it. So yeah, I think they're, I think they know what they're doing. Uh, I'd be very curious to see where, how far ahead they're shooting on all of these targets. I, so I have real doubts that Apple will su succeed. And the big one mm -hmm. is because now that you, you know, bring it back to losing Steve Jobs and, you know, not having somebody like an Elon Musk leading the helm. The big thing is do employees, the smartest, most, of, you know, the, the most sought after AI experts, robotic experts, do they want to work at Apple when, you know, they're, especially after the Apple car failure, there is nothing that tells you, Hey, I've got to be at this company. Um, Morgan Stanley released the note yesterday and they said that with the Apple car falling thousands of, you know, very top level AI people are now available and they're going up looking for other jobs. But even then I tell you that I, I think the best of the best is being snapped up by, of course, the leaders in AI. But the, the, the good thing is Tesla still, if not the leader, people want to work at Tesla and open AI and X, those are still the areas because Elon's there. And Elon has incredible, you know, he's got the track record. He's got projects that are being proven that it's working, ambitious projects. And if t Apple doesn't communicate that, you know, where do they go? Where do they go? So I would think if, if I was young and ambitious and in, in, into AI, I think my first choices would be places like NVIDIA or, uh, X AI or open AI or Tesla. One of those, there are a lot of exciting choices, but the fact that you have that device in your pocket, that aspirational iPhone in your pocket does keep the brand in the front of your mind. Mm -hmm. And I think when sure. it comes to the choice between Meta or Google or Apple, I think Apple would still be the most attractive on brand, on excitement. That's a good point. Google's got yeah. a reputation as being very monolithic, uh, very slow moving. You've got a reputation at Amazon of, of grinding your workers into paste, even in the white collar space. And, and Meta, I don't know, it's, it's got its own reputation that, uh, I don't think young people are as excited about. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I think Apple yeah, yeah. Can, can attract talent, but maybe not as easily as they would hope. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, like, uh, so the hardware, you know, the, the people making the hardware, the, the, I don't know if you've seen the rabbit. It's a, it's a new form of handheld that you can talk to that talks back to you to do all sorts of AI at least they tried to create a hardware because you know there's there's this and then there's the pin right you put the pin on your chest here and then you can talk and communicate to ai directly um apple can wipe them out right if they do something like that with their uh, with their watch that's already existing and they will they will do that but home robotics 
is the thing. <laughs> Embodied AI, right? It's now we're now here. The problem is they're behind. Apple does not have robotics expertise. They don't have AI expertise. And they, they probably have, you know, back there, but they've not yet, again, have they should have been starting this a long time ago. Well, when we don't Tesla know. Maybe they have. Do this. Sure. Maybe they did sure. and we just don't know because there's there's something going on behind the scenes, the skunk works, but we don't know what it is. And so sure. that makes recruiting very difficult. That's why Elon did AI day one and two and why he's hesitant to do three is because, well, we've got a lot of recruits. People know that we're working on good stuff and the competition yeah. goes frame by frame and steals, steals all our work. Do, so, yeah. Do you think it was a mistake for Elon, um, like coming out and saying, we're going to do robotics shows, you know, the a person in the suit and then shows the development of, you know, uh, the, the, the first version bumblebee, you know, just clunky and then shows them all progress. Do you think that was a mistake? versus Apple stays secret, then comes out with it when it's ready. There's two parts to it. I think uh, the robo suit was a terrible idea, but okay, hated fine. It. No, but hated it, hated it. And that's, I hope what we don't see on 8.8 .8 is, a, is, is a person <laughs> wearing a, a robo taxi suit, <laughs> dancing around, <laughs> look at me go. But no, I think it was a great idea because uh, the people that they wanted to attract were not attracted to Tesla at the time. How could yeah. they be? They don't know what that this is what they're trying to do. Agreed. And I think the AI days just made it exceptionally. Tesla and SpaceX were already number one and two for STEM yeah. graduates in terms of their dream jobs. And this just made it that much harder for anyone else to recruit from those talent pools. So, no, I, I think it was critical that 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 those two days take place. And if there isn't a third day, it would not surprise me because, uh, the, well, because I mean, of how there's two parts there, right? A AI day is a different thing. AI day was like, let me do a lecture on how we're doing, you know, neural network creation. Let me like open up and tell you exactly what we're doing. That's what they don't need. They should not be doing anymore. But this idea that we're going to do a robot, let me show you our progress. And that's like a crappy robot, but Hey, we're making, we're going to show you the progress, uh, versus Apple doesn't do this. Um, and, and it's like, it's a, that, that philosophy difference between, you know, trying to like knowing that it's going to be, it's like just knowing that it's going to be crap and I'm willing to show you crap versus, you know, I can only show you when it's perfected. Um, it's a very different culture in that sense. And that's why I just don't think that Apple's anymore an innovation engine. Um, that's why I've personally have decided to move more money in Tesla because I think Tesla is just knocking out of the part. We'll continue to knock it out of the part. We'll continue to deliver maybe late, but they'll deliver. So. Yep. I, I agree on all points. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Brian. Follow him on his YouTube channel, Future Aza. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.